In the beginning was the buffalo, tens of millions of them, wandering the land, munching wild grasses, and using poop and hooves to create rich, fertile soil up to 15 feet deep. Look at this. Yeah. But since Americans replaced buffalo with cows, generations of fertilizers and pesticides, tilling and overgrazing, have turned much of that nutrient-rich soil into lifeless dirt. But not on farms, where they graze cows just like wild buffalo. Well, so adaptive multi-paddock grazing, AMP grazing, is a way that mimics the way bison have moved across the Great Plains. And so it's really about the animals hit an area really hard and then they leave it for a long time. Peter Bick is a professor at Arizona State University, and he believes that if enough beef and dairy operations copy this simple hack, cattle could actually become an ally in the fight against climate change. I anticipate we'll get a lot of pushback because people are not thinking that cows can be a part of the solution. Not only are you going against the grain of environmentalists who think yeah. meat is evil yeah. for, for lots of reasons. Yeah. You took money from McDonald's for this. Yeah, I asked for money from McDonald's for this. I, I wanted to go to big companies because if they don't change, we don't get there. For his docu-series, Root So Deep, you can see the devil down there, Bick assembled a team of scientists. We're really interested in insects that live in poop. Experts in bugs and birds. Yes, Bob White. Cows, soils, and carbon. They spent years comparing five sets of neighboring farms in the southeast. On one side, traditional grazers who let cows roam one big field for months at a time and often cut fertilized grass for hay. Woo! Come on! On the other side, amp grazers who never mow or fertilize. You open a gate, they go through, it takes five minutes, Cooper will roll up a wire. And with a single line of electrical fence, move their cows from one patch of high grass to the next. Not building fence. This is how easy it is, Peter. While their science is yet to be published and peer-reviewed, Bick says early data has found amp farms pulling down up to four times the carbon, while holding 25% more microbes, three times the bird life, and twice as much rain per hour. If it's a thousand acre farm, it's 54 million gallons of water. That's now washing your soil away versus soaking into your land. Wow, look at this grass. But this is also a human experiment to see whether data and respectful discussion can change hearts and minds. This was grazed about 40 days ago, and this hadn't been fertilized in 12 years. Awesome. And when we got out of spending money on fertilizer, it was huge, mm -hmm. huge. And I didn't think it would ever happen. It is such a stress relief. We just don't worry about a lot of it anymore. Mm -hmm. And you don't even fertilize when you plant your rye grain. Nothing. It sounds crazy, but, but just works. letting Mother Nature Take do it. the yeah. work. Would it be an interesting thing if you didn't have to pay for fertilizer? Would that be wonderful? Curtis Spangler is one of the conventional farmers in Root So Deep, and he says his mind was changed when he realized he now has a way to double his herd and quit his second off-farm job. And right now, we're having to dump thousands of dollars into nitrogen every year that really, if we just change a couple things, we might be able to save that money to put it toward other uh, resources. Is that something you're committed to doing now as oh, a result yeah. of this project? We're, yeah. we're really looking and seeing the benefits of it and how we can work it. So as we hit the height of grilling season, a little food for thought. There is ways to produce meat that is not good for the planet. And there's ways to produce meat that's really good for the planet. And that's the nuance that's been missing. 